Hello peeps, it's CG Collector 101 here, and I'm back with part two of how to make the doll bedding. Go watch part one if you didn't already, where I tried to cover up me showing my face because I accidentally bent down to reach up and pick a pin. Anyway, go watch part one if you have no idea what's happening here. So, anyway, let's just, um, let me just... I stitched the last of the three sides, so we now have three closed sides of our blanket. And I am now ready for the fourth side. So, this is the fourth side. You are going to leave a hole. Sorry, that's horrible on my desk. I, I don't know. Anyways, so this is the fourth side where we're going to leave a hole. Anyways, so I'm going to show you how, t how you leave a hole. At least in my opinion, there's there is probably a better way to do this, but this is the way I'm doing it. So you're gonna stitch a little bit. Let me just do it. A little bit more. Then you're gonna back stitch. That's the reverse button. Oh no! Okay, I, that is not good. But oh well. And then you're gonna stitch again. Okay, so I just stitched a little, back stitched a little, and then stitched a little. That's probably not how you're supposed to do it. But oh my gosh, I don't even care anymore. Ow, gosh, here, look, let me finish. I'm going to put all these in my pin cushion that I probably should because I have pins on my purse. Okay, you get to see. Yes, oh my gosh, okay. Here, this time I'm going to be smart. Cover it up so you can't see me. And then. Okay, you couldn't see me then. Yes. Yeah, on the last video. Okay. Oh my gosh. I'm just gonna very quickly put all of these pins in the pin cushion where they should go. But since, of course, I've got like a 15 minute time limit. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm so afraid of pins falling everywhere and me just going like. Stop the video. Okay, we'll deal with that later. Anyways, so I just so now that you've stitched and back stitched and stitched again, we need to needle out your fabric and press your foot and everything, and pull all the way to the point where you want to start sewing again. So I want to. So you're just gonna leave that open, and I'm actually going to take this pin out and that one too. Anyways, and then. I don't know if you're supposed to have your needle in your fabric, but I'll, I would start with it in the fabric. Anyways, and then continue on. Continue on stitching, and then make sure to back stitch too. So it's like. Stitch, and then back stitch all that way. Back stitch so that in later steps it's not coming apart. And did I just seriously do that? And then, um, oh, I should probably back. Oh, my pin! <laughs> the sewing machine is vibrating and all my pins are falling on the floor. <laughs> okay, please do this in the kitchen. Or if you can't do it in the kitchen, do it in a craft room on a table like this. Oh, anyways. Oh, great, and then I got kind of funny if it, if like, I accidentally got my finger in there or something on video, I'd be like, ah, oh, don't do this at home! Yeah, anyways. I'm just gonna try to pick up some pins. I really need a magnet from cushion. Ah, watching the camera, picking up pins at the same time. Oh, uh, okay, okay, you can't see me. Oh, gosh. Okay. Anyways, so... Then, once you finish the last part of the stitch, if you have any questions, just comment them down below. I'd be happy to answer them if I did not explain the video well enough. Okay, so there we go. You now have this. It's basically two pieces of fabric sandwiched together, right side to right side, and it looks pretty weird, right? Anyway, so, to go to the next step, we're going to actually go back down to the floor, so... Anyway, so 
we're back down there on the floor, and here's our piece of fabric. Now you're going to go to the side where it has this. You're going to go into your side where it has this. You're going to snip that off. This is why you backstitch so that whenever you're turning it doesn't come out. So you're going to snip, snip, and then do it on the other side too. So snip, snip. So now that your thread is snipped on that side, you just have to turn it inside out. So I'm going to turn it inside out here. And this will only take a few seconds. Uh, so don't leave a big hole, but don't leave a tiny hole either. Don't leave a gigantic hole. Don't leave the entire side open. Don't leave a tiny pin side hole either. And I'm trying to shake this out. Anyways. You can also, um, for the corners, anyways, and the reason we um, put the fabric to wrong side to wrong side is because it makes a nice little seam. So that way all your um, stitching and the extra fabric and any any mess ups are on the inside and any, and then it's all on the outside. Now, let me just, oh gosh, this is, why is this taking so long? Anyways. So then, you just want to poke out all four corners. Not poke them out, like, make them all corner shaped. If you need any help, you can use, like, pencils or sticks or wooden dowels. Anything you want to. Okay, now i got to do the other side. Okay, while, even though I'm having a bit of a hard time poking out, or getting these corners to be corner-ish, I am loving the fabric. This was actually a remnant, so... Yeah, but it's like frogs and flowers and, ah, oh, so cute. Anyway, so you basically now have, once you've turned your blanket right side out, you now have this. I probably should have ironed my blanket, but since it's only doll size, I'm not going to really care, but you can iron it if you want to, if your fabric is really wrinkly. Anyway, so now you can, um, now you have this hole. And to fix that, you cannot ma machine stitch it because... Um, you won't get the seed. So you can either one, if you want to look up a tutorial on YouTube, you can slip stitch it. Uh, I can sort of slip stitch, it's just that I don't do a really good job and also that would take a while. Or you can hand stitch it. So, or you can hand whip stitch it, which is basically where, if I, where are my needles? That, that sounds appetizing, doesn't it? Where are my needles? <laughs> Anyways, wait, why did I say that sounds appetizing? That's awkward. Anyways, so I'm just going to pull a little bit of the white thread from the machine. Okay, dokie. Okay. Anyways, so then just get your thread and a hand needle. Here's my little pink shin. Oh, I should pull it. Okay. So I actually put my needle in my pincushion. Do not put your needles in your pincushion, otherwise they could disappear into the depths of the pincushion. And never be found again. Anyways, then you're just gonna thread the needle. Show you all of this on camera. Thread the needle. And okay, okay. Come on. Come on. Little thing. Come on. No, no, no. Okay, you guys get to hear me at least. You know, not watch me, but hear me. Try and get this thread in the needle. It's gone in a million times before, and yet. Okay. Anyway, so once you have your needle threaded, um, you don't have to like double thread it or anything. Just thread it how you would thread it. I guess I don't know. Just um, thread your needle like that. And then make sure to do a starting stitch. So, like here I have my needle and thread. And then on the other side, if you, if this is your first time doing this, just one, two, and then roll it off. And somehow, and some, oh, that's not good. You just roll it around your finger and then you try to get it to twist and twist and then... It makes a giant messed up scraggly knot, which is good. That's what we want. Anyways, so then you can either slip stitch this if you want to look up a tutorial on YouTube, 
but because one, this is only dull size, and two, I'm sort of bad at slip stitching from the few times I've tried, I'm just going to try and stitch it somehow. Anyways, so if you don't want to do slip stitch, you can always whip stitch, which is where you like pull it around. And I made I made this piece of thread way too long, didn't I? Yeah, but whip stitching is where you go like that. And then if you want to do slip stitching, you're gonna have to look up a tutorial either on YouTube or on a website because uh, I'm not going to show you. But or not slip stitching. Gosh, blind stitching. Why have I? Okay, every time I say slip stitch, I mean blind stitch. Anyways, so yeah, you're basically going to sew that up, and then we can move on to the pillows. Anyway, so the pillows are basically just blankets that have been stuffed and sewn a different way. So pillows and blankets are just really similar to each other, and am I going through the theme now? I don't know. Anyways, and then just get ready to tie it off. Just tie it in a little knot. Oh, great, great, great. No, no, no. Okay, okay. And then. Why am I singing Christmas carols? I do not know. Anyways, then when you're done, just snip off your thread. And then save, save the needle and thread if there's any thread left. Remember that you're going to need your, your needle later. Anyway, so yeah, I think I may make like four parts, and then in the next two parts there will be a pillows. So next part will be for the head pillow, and next part will be for the throw pillow. Oh great, I stitched this up and yet this is not a corner. That's a problem. Anyways, but yeah, so now you have your blanket done. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, and I'll be happy to answer them. Best as I can, anyway. So, yeah, see you in the next part, part three, to learn how to make the head pillow, which I actually don't know where mine is. Oh, here it is, to learn how to make the head pillow. Anyway, so yeah, thanks for watching. Comment, rate, like, and subscribe. Bye!